Hi, hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about type 2 diabetes. I want to talk about the mindset that comes with type 2 diabetes. There are so many, out, so many people out there who believe that their type 2 diabetes cannot be reversed. And they're of the mindset and belief that they have to be on diabetic medication for a lifetime. Well, I'm here to change that perspective today. There are very few kinds of diabetic cases, especially type 1 diabetes, and maybe very few type 2 diabetics who may not be able to change their condition because of other complications. But like I always say, when it comes to good health, it's about the mindset you have. You can think and believe you're sick and you will be sick. You can think and believe that you will find a way to heal and you will heal in most cases. And you can think and believe that, hey, you know, I've been labeled this, okay, and this is how my life is going to be for the rest of, you know, this is how I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And you are what you think. You are what your mindset and your beliefs are. Well, we're not going to talk about that. Today, we're going to talk about simple science behind diabetes and fruits. There are so many queries that keep coming in about, can I eat mangoes if I'm diabetic? Can I eat fruits if I'm diabetic? Number one, what we need to understand, the answer is yes. It depends on you, it depends on your sugar levels, it depends on your lifestyle, it depends on the amount of activity you have, the quality of sleep you're getting, how much of stress you have in your life, and your portion control. Now we all know that fruits are rich in sugar, fruit sugars, yes, it can spike your blood glucose levels, but it is also rich in vitamins, it is rich in minerals, it's rich in soluble and insoluble fiber. We know that fruits have the ability to lower your risk of heart disease, obesity, certain kinds of cancers, even your blood sugar levels and blood pressure. Now, how does that happen? We have to understand that fruits contain soluble and insoluble fiber, which plays a massive role in your bowel movement. There are so many people today who are acidic and constipated, and they have no idea that there is a connection between toxicity in the body the inability for your pancreas to produce the right amount of insulin and an impact on your digestive enzymes as well. So you see, when you have diabetes, you can't just look through a framework of treating diabetes, taking it out of your body like a car part and only looking at rising blood sugar levels and all of that stuff and treating it. Everything in the human body is connected. If you have a problem with diabetes, you have other symptoms in the body that you have to look at as well. So people with diabetes don't understand that there is a possible connection with high triglycerides, sometimes high blood pressure, sometimes kidney disease as well. So the whole idea is a holistic approach when it comes to diabetes if you want to reverse it or you want to make your condition better. So again, fruits and vegetables are important for your health. At the same time, it can increase your blood sugar levels. So let me give you a simple example. Most fruits have low to moderate, low to medium GI levels. When I say GI levels, that's your glycemic index. That's the reference range, how fast a carbohydrate digests and how fast it raises your blood sugar levels. So the higher the GI of the food, the faster that carbohydrate is digesting and the faster it's creating a spike in your blood sugar levels. So obviously that's not gonna be good for you. But now most fruits, let me give you an example, a fruit will contain about 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates. A portion of fruit, a slice of bread, will also contain about 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates. Now which one will you choose? If you constantly take the bread and you decide to have the fruit as well, your glycemic load is gonna be much, much bigger. So now if you say, hey, I wanna have fruits because fruits is giving me so much more nutrition than a slice of bread, I can still have my fruits and I can reduce the amount of bread that I have and I can still maintain my blood sugar levels. So it's not really a choice, it's about the portion size that suits your body. Now to explain that a little bit more, People are running about uh, running behind high GI foods. Okay, carrots are high GI. I can't have carrots. A diabetic can't have carrots. Too many fruits, high GI. This particular food, high GI. It's not about GI. It's about your glycemic load. There's a big difference between your glycemic load and your glycemic index. We're now going to understand what your glycemic load basically is. It's a ranking for carbohydrate-rich food. It's basically a ranking system to tell you how much your portion of food, how many carbohydrates it contains. 
So I have one portion of food that contains X amount of carbohydrates. Now there are levels. So if your food falls under the glycemic load of less than 10, it's gonna have a very minimum impact on your blood sugar levels. If your glycemic load index is gonna be between 10 and 20, so the food that you're eating falls in the category of between 10 and 20, it's gonna have a moderate, moderate impact on your blood sugar levels. Now if your glycemic load is above 20, it is gonna rapidly spike your blood sugar levels. Okay, so now when you look at GI foods, again, let me repeat what GI is. It's an indicator of how fast your carbohydrates break down into sugar in your blood. So now let me give you an example of a carrot. Okay, a carrot will have a GI of 72, which is high. It is high, but it has a glycemic load of roughly six, which means if you have carrots in the right portion, it is not gonna have an impact on your blood sugar levels. Let's give you an example of watermelon, for example. A watermelon has a, has a, a glycemic index of 72, which is again high. So on paper, it's bad for a diabetic, but the glycemic load is roughly seven, which means if you control the portion of your carrots, your mangoes, your watermelon, your other fruits, it will not have an impact on your diabetes. It will not have an impact on your blood sugar levels. In fact, because it has vitamins and minerals which have connection with, re with reducing your, with, with improving your entire health in the body, it's actually gonna help you reverse your blood too, blood your uh, blood sugar levels. Because we all know that diabetes, again, is an inflammatory disease and we all know the anti-inflammatory effects of fruits and vegetables. So here we are, a typical scenario is someone wants to eat junk food which has a high GI and a high GL, glycemic load. Now that's gonna rapidly spike up your levels, you're gonna shoot up your levels, you're gonna make your body have to produce more insulin, you're gonna have a crash, and you're gonna create this vicious craving cycle of wanting to eat more and more, and over here you're destabilizing your blood sugar levels, you have bad reports, and your doctor has to increase your medication. So really, when it comes to foods, yes, a diabetic can have fruits, can have vegetables, but you gotta look at the portion sizes and you gotta look at the total glycemic load in your body. So for example, now how can a diabetic have a dessert? If I wanna have a dessert today and I'm diabetic, I know there is an X amount of carbohydrates in it which is gonna create a spike. If I balance the rest of my carbohydrate intake during the day, I can safely have the dessert because we're not looking at the dessert's GI level, we're looking at the tight total glycemic load in a day. And that is what is important to you. So yes, you should have fruits if you're diabetic. You can't go against nature, nature is healing. But if you're gonna overdo your fruits and have fruit platters and have three mangoes and four mangoes and have your white bread and have your junk and have your desserts, obviously, your type two diabetes is gonna get worse. Forget about it being reversed, it's gonna get worse. So we have to understand balance in nutrition, not the word moderation, balance for you, everyone's different. One particular diabetic may be, may be able to have two mangoes in a day. One may be able to have only one because he doesn't wanna give up on his other carbohydrate intake. The second thing about fruits and diabetes, do not juice your fruits. When you juice your fruits, you're breaking down, you're denaturing a lot of vitamins and you're breaking down the fiber so your blood sugar levels are gonna spike up completely. Now there are certain patients who can only have fruit juices so make sure that you mix it with fiber so that the fiber again doesn't allow your blood sugar levels to rise too fast. So when you're doing your smoothies, you want to make sure that you have fiber in as well. Although I'm not a fan of juicing fruits, fruits have to be eaten in the whole form in order for you get to get the fiber and the exact, the, the proper impact of the vitamins and the minerals. You juice it, there's heat, the heat denatures certain vitamins and minerals, you destroy the fiber. So don't break nature, eat it in its full form. So now work with your health professionals. Now work with your doctors. The problem is not the mango. The problem is not the watermelon. The problem is not your carrots. It is how much you have. Because we're in this belief that, oh, it's healthy, it's natural, let me eat more and more. Even a healthy person, if they overdo it on fruits, if they overdo it on all of these things, they are gonna have problems with their sugar levels. Because you wanna make sure that your pancreas do not produce more insulin than they require to. So things like overeating will make your type two diabetes worse, even if it's the good stuff. Understand, you want your body to produce minimum insulin for the food that you eat. 
So it is about the glycemic load, the total carbohydrate intake and the quality of carbohydrate intake that you have. So if you wanna have more fruits, which you should do, because especially for diabetics, you wanna be careful of possible kidney problems, you wanna be careful of high triglycerides and you wanna be careful of high blood pressure because everything, like I said, is connected to your diabetes. Understand at the end of the day, insulin is a hormone. So you gotta look at your endocrine system in the human body and not just your post fasting levels and your pre-fasting levels. That is scratching the surface when it comes to your diabetes. You gotta go over and beyond that to the root cause and that's when you can heal and that's when you can reverse your type two diabetes. So stop looking at GI levels. It's good to be aware of it. Start looking at GL levels. Start looking at how much you're eating, your portion size, are you overeating, and your carbohydrate intake. You come to the perfect balance, you can have a normal life having your fruits, your dry fruits, even in smaller quantities, and balancing, it, balancing everything else with your daily intake of meal. Have a great day, everyone. It is shameful that our nation is the diabetic capital of the world, considering the amount of hospitals we have, the amount of doctors we have, the amount of nutritionists we have, dietitians we have, it is shameful that we are still the diabetic capital of the world. The only person who can start making the change is you because your doctors, your nutritionists, they're there to guide you and coach you to a particular limit. After that, you gotta battle things like your willpower when it comes to the food choices you make, how much of activity you're gonna put in your day, you choose an activity or you choose an excuse, the kind of sleep that you have because most hormones regulate while you sleep. Insulin is a hormone, so it is important and has a connection with the quality of your sleep and your stress levels. So it finally comes down to you and what you can do. So we gotta get out of our mode of blaming people all the time, blaming things, take accountability for our own health. If you understand how your body works in response to food, you will be the best judge for how many fruits you can have. Seek professional help if you have to, keep your doctors in the loop, because as you start improving, your doctors will have to start reducing your medication. And that's when you know you're healing. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. Have a great weekend.